Hey, Mac. It's uh, Nicholas from Radio Nation. How you doing? Nicholas, how's it going, man? It's going well. It's uh, good to hear your voice again. How have you been? Yeah, I've been great. Yeah, it's been, I guess, close to a year since we talked. Yeah, it has been, and uh, you know what, man? It's been a. It's been, it seems like it's been a crazy year for you since I met you. Uh, you you didn't have too many followers and too many uh, likes and stuff on Facebook and social media, but now you've exploded, man. It's awesome. So, uh, uh, you know, for those listening out there that have never heard you before, uh, before we get into that, I guess, uh, how did you get your start in the music? Um, I started the music. I uh, I've been playing piano since I was pretty little. I think when I was like six or seven, I uh, started playing and. I played for about, I guess you do like the Royal Conservatory thing, and I played till about like grade five of that. And then I ended up quitting. I remember my uh, my dad always told me not to because he said I'd regret it, and I didn't understand. I was in elementary school. But I quit because it wasn't my thing. Like, I didn't really like playing like minuet and C major and all the stuff that you learn there. And it was a few years later that I decided to pick up the guitar. It was beginning of grade eight. I was really into it just because I was influenced by so many musicians and I loved the idea of like performing and the uh, traveling across the world and it was just something that I knew was my thing. So I picked up the guitar and started playing a bit and it was, wasn't too long after that I started writing songs and then as time went on I started playing the piano again because it's such a great instrument to play when you're writing too. So um, it's been uh, it's been a long road, but since then, I guess I didn't release a YouTube video till I met you in grade twelve. Yeah, and uh, we met back in I believe it was probably like early, early or late, late January, maybe even mid January. It was one of the first uh, first entertainment pieces that I actually ever did for the Nordstrom News, and I'm I'm quite proud of it to be quite totally honest with you. I think it's a very cool that you've come a long way. Um, so I guess um, uh, for those listening in right now, um, who have you been your biggest influences musically? Um, I guess I know in the past as you mentioned in um, the article and we've talked about definitely Brian Adams like he uh, he's been a big influence on me based on songwriting he's just it's a cool it's a cool story he has and how he's from Vancouver and how he got signed and uh, I was always really into I've always been into looking beyond the artist and how how they got to where they are today so I really followed him a lot I love Journey Aerosmith but then as far as today, I'm super into pop music. So honestly, I listen to everything top 40. And uh, inc- like on top of that, of course, every other genre I can think of. Like some of my friends are really into country. I'm always listening to rap. Um, almost, I've got almost everything on my iPod. But as far as influences, probably Chris Brown, um, Bruno Mars. Um, I love Taylor Swift. Like I listen to everything. And uh, I'm, always, I'm always trying to learn. Um, what has been the biggest challenge for you in your career up to this point? Biggest challenge? Um, I'd have to say just being comfortable in your own skin and just uh, no matter what criticism you hear or no matter who tells you, tries to pull you one way when you're going the other, just to stay true to who you are, man. And just uh, don't worry about the naysayers and just move forward and continue on the path wherever you're heading and uh, stay focused on the goal. You know, because it's, it's a hard, uh, I'm not even close to where I want to be, but when I step back and realize what I've done this year, like, it's nice. Since the last time I talked to you, it's like I'm in a completely different position. Yeah. But, um, it's it's a lot of fun, the journey, but you just got to, I think, no matter, because some days are hard days where you realize you got a long way to go or you're not having a good time with maybe the way you're feeling about your music, and other days are great days where you got so many tweets coming in, so many supportive um girls and that are just willing to put in their time to listen to your music or help you build your views or it's just it's incredible the support that i'm seeing so that really makes it a lot easier too yeah no absolutely and i apologize if, I, if it sounds like i'm cutting you off the it's just the feed coming in from your skype to my skype it's a little delayed so it sounds like a it sounds oh, a little sore so if I, if I sound like i'm cutting you off it's not a personal thing it just sounds a little delayed on my end that's all <laughs> All right, I know you're a good dude. <laughs> um, so the last time we, you know, we spoke, um, you know, I actually got a chance to interview uh, Eric Mosher as well, who's, uh, he's, who you've worked with, and uh, yeah. he compared your work ethic to uh, one of your idols, Brian Adams. So I guess what is it like to hear that, being compared to your idol in any fashion? Uh, yeah, you know, I think that's an honor for anyone in the world to hear to be compared to Brian Adams. So for me personally, I can't even explain how great that is because – 
A lot of people don't know, but the studio that I'm actually recording in in Vancouver, Brian Adams like created. It's in uh, Gastown in Vancouver, and uh, you know, just being in there at the beginning, you're always thinking like, "Wow, Brian Adams created this studio." And of course, I never see him in there. I never have, but I know he lives off in England. I'm pretty sure. But um, so that was pretty cool for me at first, and then after that, um, I started working with Eric. Because I contacted the studio myself. Before that, I had the same questions that anyone else would. Like, how do you get to a recording studio? How do you record your music there? Who do you work with? What does it cost? There's so many questions that go through your mind. So instead of waiting on people, I just kind of took the initiative and just called them up. And Eric was one of their best uh, producers and engineers there. So I sent him an email, sent him some of my demos. And uh, it wasn't long after that. I think it was like a few hours. He sent back. He said, I love your music. Let's Let's meet. And honestly, it's been me and him ever since then. It's been uh, like a year, almost a year and a half. And like this, I have an EP that'll be coming out in 2013, and it was done. Like all six songs were just me and him in a room, which is I didn't really realize till the other day. But uh, I was doing all the the instruments, and he's doing all the mixing, and we just realized that all six songs were just done by the two of us and no one else. It's pretty crazy. What is it like working with him? Then, uh, what describe? He's worked with guys, people like Justin Bieber and stuff. So he's a pretty, he's a pretty heavy name out, out in BC, anyway. So what's it like working with him? Oh, it's great. Yeah, he is just awesome, right? Because when you when you're working with an engineer, you just, you know, you're working with them, but at the same time, like you you become friends with them because you're there all day. Like you get, you find out that you can get to the studio on say like a Saturday, and you get in there at 9 a.m. And most likely, uh, at least me personally, you're leaving. Uh, in the early hours of the next day. So usually it's like seven or 12 hour days. And, um, you're, you know, it's, it's so much fun. He's such an easy guy to work with. He's incredibly smart too. Um, he's, he's one, he's one of those guys and he was back in school and high school. I think he pulled like a 98 average or something, but, uh, he stayed true to what he wanted and he stayed with music, which is cool. So working with him, he's great. And he appreciates all styles of music too, right? Like he, I think a lot of the stuff he does, he does more rock and like urban music. Yeah. But I was one of his first pop projects, and he's gotten really into it. And I couldn't ask for more for how uh, great he is in the studio. And um, yeah, because he's he's a busy guy, right? He's always got artists in there. But we've become great friends, and I I can only imagine. I think that we're going to be working together forever too, because I really like the way that he does things. No, absolutely, and uh, I mean, it always helps to have a guy who's working for you who's worked with a guy like Bieber and some of the other names that he's worked with. It definitely definitely looks good on, on your part anyway. Yeah, I think, yeah, he has. He's worked with Bieber once. I think he stopped in Vancouver when he was on tour or something and to uh, lay down some vocals. But I know he had, Eric had a big part, too, in the uh, ACDC, their yes. most three their album that came out, I think it was Black Ice a couple years ago, and that was really cool for him because the way that they run things too, with like people think the bigger you get, the more, um, almost like the more technology that they can use. And, but ACDC just goes in there and they'll record vocals just like in the waiting room, <laughs> five, 10 feet away. I've heard, and they're just like wicked musicians. Right. So I actually saw them in Vancouver. So the, the fact that he's worked with them is just incredible. Does he bring off? Does he bring that that sort of veteran presence that you, you can almost tell that he's worked with so many other people and that he knows what he's doing? Do you get that sense every time you work with him? Oh, of course. Yeah, he's yeah he's so good at getting me. Uh, I know, like I always want to bring friends to the studio because he says I can, and I know some of my buddies would want to come. But at, like, there's certain points where I feel like I'll bring them more. But when I'm like tracking vocals. Or um, if we're if I'm kind of doing the, like at the beginning, like laying down the the basics, where I'm just focusing on the writing process, it's just when it's me and him, he really helps me focus. Whether because when you go in the booth to do vocals, sometimes you overthink things for sure, and you start um, you start focusing too much on your pitch or your tone, and he'll he'll just be the one to really tell me. I know it sounds simple, but he'll just be like, man, you're in your bedroom, like just do it like like it's natural, and you're just going at it one time. And he's he's great at that because the truth is, in there, a lot of the time your first take will be your best. I find that happens a lot because you're just you're just relaxing and you sit down and boom, it's done. And um, with him, I think the best thing is he's got he's got a great ear too. He hears a lot of things and he's I love him for his harm the harmony that he comes up with too. He helps me out a lot with that. Um, he, he's always the one who's telling me I have sonic ears because whenever we're 
after he fixes stuff, he sends me, and I always notice the smallest things, like at a minute 31, I'll, for some reason, hear, like, some sort of a laser noise or, like, something that I think sounds like a dog bark. <laughs> and he'll look at it, and he'll find it, but he'll just tell me, I can't believe you heard that. No one's going to hear that. And it's annoying sometimes that I hear that stuff because I know no one else does, but at the same time, I'd rather have, I guess, good hearing than... <laughs> yeah, no, Absolutely. So yeah, and it's good to be able to pick out that stuff too, right? You want it to be perfect. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, sorry, go on. Oh no, just to, yeah. To sum that up, my question, I'd say that yeah, I wouldn't really want to be working with anyone else. Uh, he's just a lot of fun to be with, and that's the thing. You got to get along with an engineer or a producer, and you got to be able to work off each other and see eye to eye because you're going in, as I said, early morning, and you say okay. Um, I got a budget. I got to record a song today. And, um, you know, you don't want to rush anything. Like, in a way, you don't want to think like that. You should think that this song could take as long as it should before I finish it. But, you know, I, I am young, and uh, I got to get stuff done. I don't have the uh, the budget of, uh, say, Bieber that he's worked with to walk in. We could stay at the studio for a few weeks or months at a time. But sometimes you got to get things done in one day. And, uh you know, he, I love working with him. He's super easy to work with. Let's uh, let's get on a, a topic here. And if you're just joining us here on Radio Nation, we're joined uh, live uh, in uh, live with uh, Mac Farrell from uh, Vancouver over Skype. And uh, I will be taking your questions because there are a ton of questions from Mac Farrell over Twitter. So um, first, we're going to get through some of these questions as well. Um, I've had a chance to listen to all of your songs, um, but you film the music. You film the music video from from pretty much everything that most of your stuff, anyway. Um, but the one I really like is my only one, personally, just because it was filmed in, in White Rock and because it, it looked like it was really challenging to film that video. Was it really hard to film that? Oh, uh, that was. Uh, oh, sorry. One sec. I saw a tweet that said, "Oh my God, Mac Farrell worked with Justin Bieber." But uh, <laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> Not yet. Anyway. Um, God. Okay. Uh, yeah, my only one. That was that was an interesting video. That was the first time I'd really. Uh, it was such a beautiful day. I think that was the middle of June, and um, we went down to White Rock, and it was uh, that was the first time that we'd really filmed like super in public. I guess I could say where there's tons of people around you, and even if you're really minding your own business or the track's playing really quietly, it's funny when you have a camera around. Like people love to stare. I guess it's just our instinct that we do that and so at one point I actually had this man following me around with his phone and he was filming me while we were doing stuff and I guess they think that I, I could be I don't know they think I'm some pop star from Australia or something <laughs> filming and uh, so we were in public on the beach and there's tons of people around which is like it's cool because you really put yourself out there and you don't you can't focus on anyone else and you just focus on the camera so it was a learning experience for me but also, it can be difficult because people can, I guess, ruin shots, as I could say, like just run through or a football goes through. But uh, it was a lot of fun because when you're filming, like weather is such a big thing. Mm -hmm. And you plan for a day and you got everything figured out and then it's raining on a day like that and we wouldn't have been able to film because you figure it's got to be sunny out. And um, at that time, too, uh, it was... I guess at the time where I wasn't using a girl in that video or Live Alive Tonight. So that makes it a little more difficult. I just wanted to uh, you know, go out there and try something because at the time that was pretty early on before I'd started. Like on the new video of Kiss You in the Morning, I really think that we put more. That video was a lot of fun to do, but we also put more thought into it and like what can we do. Mm -hmm. And then I put a lot of my friends in it too. But with my only one, it was a lot of just me and the uh, director just thinking like what can we do uh, out on the beach alone and we got lucky a few times like I remember one shot like the train came by yeah, so we, yeah. and uh, you know just it was just kind of pretty natural walking around on the beach and uh, for those that are just listening if you don't know White Rock and uh, I got family there but uh, the train does not go by very often at all it, uh, really? it doesn't at all <laughs> <laughs> guess we got lucky we were just we were just chilling there and then the train just came by and we're like oh, alright we'll get that in the shot that could be good I of all the times I, I've been there which when I was younger quite a bit but I, I don't the train I know the Amtrak goes by like twice a day but the freight trains very rarely they, they don't go by very often so I, I when I wrote down the questions I was like man did you have to sit around and wait that long because they, they don't come by too often <laughs> Yeah, no, we didn't wait too long because that day we were all just so hot. I remember we just couldn't wait to get out there. We we went out there in this little car, and um, I was just doing everything to stay cool. I think I bought some beef jerky because I figured I don't know the salt. <laughs> yeah, 
but uh it was it was it was really fun though doing that stuff like at the beginning it's, it's just like anything at the beginning you're kind of uncomfortable and you're unsure about what you're doing and then you get into it and you're like this is a lot of fun uh, you know who cares and people are all around you as i said before we did some shots on the boardwalk i don't know if they made it into the i can't even remember if they made it into the video but people are just everyone stops and turns and just like who is that right? <laughs> Anyone who wants attention just go out on the beach with the camera yeah and I, um, one thing I did want to ask is in, in terms of uh, creating videos, uh, you mentioned especially when you're outdoors uh, and being from Vancouver, this is definitely a major factor. It's not like here in Ontario where we'll get dry spells for a while, but you have to really have to pay attention to the weather, especially in Vancouver when you're outdoors. How much of a factor is weather in anything that you shoot? Yeah, um, I guess sometimes, like anyone will say, like you have to make the best of it. But um, it, it's definitely one of those things that that's the, fir- that's the first aspect that I think of. I'm just like, you know what, if it's sunny tomorrow, it'll be a great day. Like, that's all I'll ever ask for. Um, like, in the new video for Kissing in the Morning, we were up on this roof. We just went in this old, uh, uh, one of my friends like had, used to live in this apartment, and she, and she told me that uh, she could still buzz me in. This is kind of funny, but... <laughs> And so she buzzed me in from her phone, and we went up there and uh, went up to the roof and kind of just, like, hopped over this fence, and we just saw this view of Vancouver, and it was just a perfect spot. Like, I, I'm not sure if we were supposed to be there, but it, I don't know. It was a lot of fun, and I had uh, one of my friends, like, charging the bows in the, the hallway, too, because it kept dying. So people would walk by him while he was just sitting on the floor charging that thing. I think they want going on. So that was kind of one of those shots where hopefully it doesn't rain and hopefully security doesn't come up and we can just get this done. So um, that was a lot of fun too. And especially people will see at the end of that video. It's just, it's in, it's in uh, one of my best friends. He, we call it the Mave, I guess a lot of people do, like the man cave in there. Yeah. Had a bunch of friends in there having a good time. And I figured like, you know, why don't we film in here and just make it really natural? Because I didn't want to, I didn't want to try to play off like a really tacky party scene or anything like that and uh, like get a bunch of actors. I just figured, you know, get a bunch of my friends, have fun in the room and we'll make the best of it. And I think it turned out really well, at least. It turned out like uh, really candid and it was a lot of fun. Well, all your videos are, are really, really great quality too, which is uh, something nice to see, especially because you you are in time. It, it's, it's nice to see very, very high quality videos then because I, I really do think, at least personally, that they, they play it, they make a big difference in, in uh, how many views you get. Yeah, I'm sure the cameraman would appreciate that comment. I'll tell him. <laughs> um, it's, it's definitely one of those things where I. You get into music and you're recording music and then you figure, okay, I want to put myself on YouTube. I got to get out there. And then you you kind of realize you can't just put a song on YouTube with like a picture of my face. It won't really get around because um, people love music, but when it comes to that, they want to see a face, especially when it's on YouTube. I find if you you get views, you got to have some sort of a video um, to get people's attention. And um, since like since the beginning I started, I was kind of uncomfortable on camera and I wasn't sure... I wasn't exactly sure what to do, and you're just worried when you're in public. You look around, but then now it's just the complete opposite. Like, I'll just make a huge scene in public, not in a negative way, but <laughs> I do be loud. Because, you know what, it's just like anyone who's like a dancer, an actor, like singer, whatever. If you look uncomfortable, you make your audience uncomfortable, especially when it's live, right? Even if you're making mistakes or you are actually a little nervous inside, if you just show that you're cool and poised, like I'm sure everyone around you will feel the same way. And that's definitely what I learned there. And since then, I'm just trying to make the videos better and better, just like the music. Like if people like a song, I love that, but I can't wait to make an even better song. So it's going to be fun in 2013 because i got a lot of new music for everyone to listen to. Let's talk a bit about um, social media. We just t- you just touched on it, and uh, it's where the direction I want to head next is. Because when I met you, like I, I alluded to earlier, you didn't have too many followers, and I, your subscribe your your view was was pretty solid. But for having the when the, the first video came out, but um, it, just like it isn't what it is today. And I have I don't think I've seen an artist in one year grow that isn't signed. I mean, you can you can say Carly Rae Jepsen, but I mean. Somebody that's unsigned just grow the way you have on social media. It's pretty pretty astounding, actually. You got twenty eight thousand followers or plus now. Uh, you got enough subscribers on YouTube that makes you know it makes a lot of people really jealous. Um, how have you been able to really capture and utilize social media to your benefit? Uh, I really, um, I guess it just kind of hit me that for a lot of things you can sit inside your room, your bedroom, and you can really 
say that you want it more than anyone else, but you really just got to go and get it. And that I mean that in every single way. And even if that is me at the beginning, spending an hour every night on Twitter, like direct messaging people and responding to direct messages and like tweeting and getting to know people. Because I find if you can build sort of a, even if you don't know someone, if you can build sort of a relationship with them, they'll feel connected to you and they'll want to help out and they'll want to view it. Or I will tell them, please show all your friends. And I just always wanted it to spread. And my goal has always been, I can get like thousands of people or hundreds of thousands of people to know my music. But as soon as, person A meets person B and they both know who I am, I feel like that's when it will hopefully blow up, right? And people really, and I'll spread around even more because uh, that's really what I focused on in the beginning, just getting my music recorded, always having new material for people and just connecting with as many people as I could. And that's what I like about Twitter. Facebook, it's, uh, you have a Facebook music page, but you can't really connect with as many people because there's a lot of privacy rules on there. Mm -hmm. And it's like you can just connect with anyone around the world. And I've even tweeted recently about where my fans were from. I wanted to know where these girls are from. And I was figuring certain places you'd know. Like I knew that Texas and California, they definitely popped out. But I, I can't even believe how many girls I see from Argentina. I was saying that. It's just so strange. I don't know why. Like everywhere in South America. And it's just all, all over the place. And it's incredible. And I guess it's because uh, they all have the same interests in the musicians they like. And um, that's why at the beginning I really uh, did my best to try to interact and connect with people who liked um, some of the young artists that were coming up. Like whether I saw some fan page that was for One Direction or for Justin Bieber. I, that's actually how one thing happened. I remember it was in January or February, right after I met you, I got followed by this Justin Bieber fan page. I didn't think much of it. And then I clicked on them. They had like 130,000 followers. And uh, I just couldn't believe that some fan group has that many. <laughs> I, uh, I followed them back and direct messaged them and asked them, like, hey, you want to let some people know about my music? And they were totally into it. And I think it was that night. I didn't have many followers at the time. I got like 30 to 40 followers just off them tweeting about me. And I was really fired up about that. And that's as, as you grow, your expectations grow so much. Like at the beginning, you're thinking, I always have this thing with uh, my buddy Rob, who a lot of people on Twitter know. He's like my best friend, and he's managing me now, and he works with me on everything. And we always had this thing where uh, <laughs> we'd always say, you know, like a 1,000 views is good, but 2,000 would be so much better. And then we'd hit 2,000 and say, you know what, 2,000 is okay, but 5,000 is better. Mm -hmm. And now today with YouTube, I'm looking at, we've got to hit a million and I, I'm sure when I hit a million, I'll, I won't think that's good enough. And that's just kind of my personality. And I think I, I'd like to think that's a good thing. You know, maybe I'm fooling myself. But uh, I, I can be content with a lot of things. But just I think with my career, I'm always striving to do better. Exactly and, right. You want to do you want to do as best as you can, right? <laughs> of course. Um, I think it's impressive, and like I alluded to earlier, I haven't seen anybody of all the artists that have ever come on this show. Uh, I, I have never seen anybody grow so fast in, in such a short time. And uh, I remember when we we, we met, um, you know, you know, I, I I did quite honestly enjoy your music, and I was thinking like, wow, you know, like you know, I, I was like, man, you got a lot of work. And it was just like one day I just looked at your face, your Twitter, and I was like, holy crap, like you've got like eight thousand followers, and it's like two months later, and I was like, wow, you're doing you're, you're obviously doing something right, and uh, that really shows in your music and uh, the at least the, the music videos for sure because they're really well put together. Um, so I wanted to touch on 2013 before I get to a lot of these fan questions because there are a ton, and, and I can tell you right now the traffic on my site is exploding um, from all the stuff. So 2013, you've alluded to it. It's a big year. Uh, what have you got around in store for 2013? Well, um, I just put up a cover the other day of like a mashup I did of uh, Marvin's Room and uh, Don't Judge Me. It's two songs by Drake and Chris Brown. At the end, I released like the name of my EP. It's going to be Take Off. And so Kiss You in the Morning was the first single. And I don't want to say any dates yet because I'm not 100% sure. But because um, it's through iTunes right now. They had some holiday shutdown stuff that was throughout December and the beginning of January where if you submit your music and you want it to be released, there's possibilities that it won't come out at the right time. So that's the reason that it got delayed a little bit. But it's looking like the EP takeoff will be out at the end of January or the beginning of February. And I'll let everyone know on Twitter really soon. 
and that'll have six songs. Uh, four of them will be completely new. Kiss You in the Morning will be on it. It's the lead single. And then I decided to put Fallen Over You on it, too, which is a video and a song I released in uh, late July to being in August. And the reason I did that is because that song is it's really important to me, and it was just it was one of those songs, the first song I wrote that was like a big ballad on the piano, and people seemed to really like it. Like, I just got a lot of responses, and it's always nice to have a song like that. And um, so, yeah, the other four songs will be brand new. And then I'm looking in the late spring and the summer to have a second EP out. I don't know the name of that yet, of course, but I'll be recording. So hopefully I'll have two EPs out before the summer. So uh, I just want to get people as much music as they can because I'm always writing. And that's just what I focus on most is just writing and getting as much music as I can out to all the girls and guys that uh, listen to my stuff. Now, I'm going to be taking some questions off of Twitter, and there are a lot of them, so I'm going to try to get through all of them, and I'm only going to read the best ones because um, I've done this before on the show, and believe me, I have seen some very, very interesting questions from a lot of people. So the first question is this. Uh, it comes from Lindsay uh, Longo. I'm not sure where she's from, but uh, she says this. Uh, do you do concerts? And uh, I will add on to this question, but if you don't, do you plan on doing any shows in the near future? Of course, yes. plan on doing shows in the future. Uh I guess 2012 was my time to really um, gain fan base. Uh, I, it, was the, it was my opportunity, I figured, to get stuff on YouTube, get Twitter going, Facebook. I always said that I, when I have a show, I want people to want to come. I don't want to have to ask relatives and family to come. I just I can't wait till the time that I can tweet out and say that I'm going to be performing at this place. So... I guess for anyone who's wondering, what, what's happening right now is I'm really just trying to gain a following, get as many of you from wherever you are to like my music and want to come to a show. And uh, eventually, when I can get the budget for it and get the opportunity to travel and play shows, I will, and I can't wait to. And I guess that's the point of getting the EPs out there, too. So if I can have songs on YouTube, a six-song EP, and maybe another four- to six-song EP, I'll have a lot of material that I can perform and... I can't wait for that. So I'm really excited. So the answer is yes. I am going to be performing eventually, and it'll be it'll be a lot of fun. This guy comes from Ryan. I can't pronounce his last name, but he's uh, he's from North Vancouver, and he does he asks um, where do you get the inspiration for your songs? The inspiration for my songs, definitely from everything. I, I honestly can't answer that specifically. Uh, it's probably just. Anything throughout the day that I figure, I just get an idea, whether it's um, something I experienced or something I've been thinking about, or a lot, a lot of the time the lyrics and the ideas come from uh, maybe a little, my melody that I came up with in my head, something that I heard and I figure, oh, that'd be catchy. I'm always using the voice memo on my iPhone. It's, you know, pretty simple and terrible, but I have to do it for some of the hooks that I come up with or the lyrics because I will forget it. Like, you can write down lyrics on a piece of paper, but I wake up the next morning, if I forget the melody, then it just it kills me. So uh, I guess I'm inspired by anything throughout the day, and it's always changing. Especially this time of year, the music I'll write is, I guess, more winter music, if that makes sense. It's that I kind of get inspired by that with, like, Christmas time. And then as, as this time passes, I can't wait to that, that EP. The second EP that I'm hoping will be out in the spring-summer will be really summer-based. Just summer songs that people can totally jam out to and have a great time and just make them happy because I figure that's a great point of music. There's sad ballads, but I just think music is great if it can bring your day up a level. Absolutely. Um, there's, some, there's some really good questions coming off here from a lot of your fans on, uh, on Twitter. Uh, this one comes from Martina. I'm not sure where she's from, and I, I do like to – I find it important to mention that um, because there could be two Martinas listening for all we know, but and they could be asking the same question. Who knows? Uh, so this is uh, from Martina, and she asks, uh, what are some of the celebrities you'd uh, like to collaborate with if you could? Oh, <laughs> there's so many at the point I'm at right now, right? Like, who wouldn't I collaborate with? Yeah. I mean, uh, if I could – collaborate i i've always really wanted to work with chris brown like uh i just i really liked his music like he was a huge part of my like early high school grade eight, nine, ten, and i love his stuff bruno mars like i i really like his his music and i'm just i just started listening to his new album so i won't talk that much about that because i don't know enough about it yet but his song uh young girls right now on his new album is i've listened to it like 15 times in the last 24 hours it's just it's such a great track so him 
And I've always thought, I, all the time right now, I'm writing kind of summer hooks, and they've, they've got a lot of, it's like a really fun beat. And I always think B.O.B., like I know that some of his music's a little bit um, different than mine, but he does some poppy stuff, and I just think to have him on the verses of a song of mine would just be so sick, and I would just write it really, I'd write it more for his style, I think, and I'd have a lot of fun working with him. Or uh, I've always thought maybe... Taylor Swift is the type of person that I could see myself collaborating with one day. If I ever got the opportunity, it'd be cool because we're both, she's like, I, she's such a great songwriter. Like, I think it was her third album, like Speak Now. If you go on Wikipedia and look at that, it's one of the only albums you can find today where there's not even a big list of, uh, usually on all these albums, it shows all the songwriters, producers. Mm -hmm. It's just a line that says all lyrics and, lyrics and music written by Taylor Swift. That's it. Especially so she, in country, too. It's not very common. Yeah, so she did that whole thing, and I, every song I, that anyone's ever listened to was written either in my bedroom or somewhere in my house. So I just do all my writing alone, so I'd love to write with her. I can't wait to finally collaborate with other writers. Just going to go through uh, some more Twitter questions here as well. Um, I saw one. I'm just, I literally just lost it, so give me one second as I find it. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, this is from Camilla. Uh, I'm not sure where she's from. I think she said Argentina in another tweet as well. Uh, which is one of your favorite restaurants, and um, if, if you do, and when you go there, what do you usually order? Uh, my favorite restaurants, I love going to this probably a lot of the time. You know what? Oh, shout out here to, in Gastown, Vera's Burgers. I oh, always go. It's a good place. <laughs> never, I'd never gone there before, but um, ever since I started recording, we'd always walk in there, and their, their food, like their burgers, sounds funny. It tastes really real. Like <laughs> <laughs> Food, and the funny thing about them is I remember I went in there like a couple times to eat, and I never talked to them, just ordered. And then it was like back in February or March, they like followed me on Twitter. And I always found that so weird because I never spoke to them and they, I'd never told them who I was or anything. So ever since then, I was like, oh, you know what? I guess maybe they're into the music. Who knows? But <laughs> but their uh, food is really good. And you know what? So much, I'm not picky. I'm, I'm not a picky eater at all. Like I, I've got some friends that are, but I, I'll eat anything. Like I love Cactus Club, Earl's, Old Spaghetti Factory. Like I, I love eating almost anywhere. I'm not picky. Like there's maybe Brussels sprouts, the only food I don't like. Like I, I can't think of many other things that I don't like eating. Fair enough. Um, this is more of a question for me. What is uh, what is one of your favorite things about Gastown? Gastown, uh, just. It's just the the history of it, I guess. And I'm not the history as far as I've looked into, but just the feeling you get when you're there. Mm -hmm. One of those places that people get, it's weird. When I drive through there with people, they always they lock their doors, I guess I could say. <laughs> it's one of the in town. But then you really get down there, and it's like it's pretty happening. Like some of the restaurants down there, and on a Friday or Saturday night, we'll go for some food. And it's a pretty cool place. And I like ever I probably only been in Gastown maybe like 10 times in my life before I started recording that and now I'll spend so much time there because I really have learned to appreciate it for the way it is and it's a really warm place I love the way it's lit and the way the roads are and it's, it's really cool yeah that cobblestone has a nice effect to it yes I pretty I always wonder I don't know if anyone else knows this it sound weird but like Nickelback's latest album yeah they, the photo of that clock. I think that's in Gastown. It is. I, I, I'm not 100 percent sure, but it looks. I I looked at it when it because I was there when it came out, and it just looks. It looks like the exact same thing. Like, I feel like it has to be. Yeah, it's got to be. It looks so similar, and that's cool, right? Repping Vancouver. Yeah, and they're they're well, they're from Alberta originally, but they do a lot of recording in Vancouver, so it sort of makes sense. Yeah, they record actually at the warehouse where I was recording. Um, a lot of people do. I guess well, Michael Bublé and Brian Adams, of mm -hmm. course, are the manager, and they're always in there. Um, but other than that, I'm I'm not sure who. I think Marianne is French. They're in there a lot. Um, that's actually the funniest when you get a big artist like that. Is because a lot of the time when you're waiting to go to the studio, you can get bumped. And what I mean by that is like you think you're in, and then you get the phone call, and it's like, hey man, uh, you know what? So and so is here to record, and it's one of those things where you can't really even say like, oh, I'll pay. Because sometimes it's half rate on the day. You say, like, I'll pay full rate or whatever, because if it's Michael Bublé or something, they'll be like, yeah, man, this isn't really about money at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Song or 
whatever he needs to do, and you're just like, all right, I accept it. And it's just the uh, the order on the food chain right now. So hopefully one day maybe I'll be the one that they're moving spots for. You. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully, and if you're a pretty loyal guy, hopefully, hopefully in your career works, so hopefully that does happen. <laughs> Sure. Um, here's another question off of Twitter. This comes from Catherine in New Jersey. She has a couple questions, so I'm going to try to get to everybody's before I go make second rounds. And uh, this is a good one. Which instrument do you enjoy playing the most? Oh, you know, ah, uh, that's hard. Probably. Oh, it's so different on every day. But you know what? I'll just say guitar because guitar is it's one of those instruments you like you can take anywhere, and it's it's very it's just very personal. The reason I like when you're just sitting down um, playing the guitars, you can play it like it, it's so cliche. <laughs> they always make fun of it. Like there's always that one guy at the campfire playing guitar, but it's really great for that. And I think that's the reason a lot of people want to play. You can just pick up and start playing tunes that people know. And it's just I always write on the guitar too, because it's always easy for me. Where like I'm using the capo, and I need to, like if I'm finding like I've got some great chords and a great hook, I'm just finding the uh, key that I want to be in. I can just throw it around there. And I'm definitely I'm a little more comfortable. I'm probably better at guitar than piano, well, definitely, and because I'm just playing it all the time. So it's just a lot of fun to play. And I just recommend I, I only play guitar and piano. So I recommend anyone who's like a songwriter like play one of those instruments because or both if you want to, because they're just great for writing music. And it's great to play too because sometimes you're just a little you're not really feeling it on one of them and your ideas running short. So you just hop over to the piano and it just gives you such a warm sound. Because some days the piano is like the thing that you need to play. It really like lets off stress or you have to have a lot of fun playing it. No, absolutely. Uh, I'm just going to try to get through some more questions here. And as I go through them, the, the, my Twitter is like exploding and my phone is like about to die. But I'm reading them off the Internet, so don't worry. Um, this one, I'm trying to get through people that I haven't asked, that I haven't had a chance to get to yet. So I'm just scrolling through as many as I can. Um, let's talk a little bit about I uh, Kiss You in, in the Morning. Uh, what were some of the inspirations for that song? Um, yeah, I wrote that song at my mom's house in the basement because my parents are uh, divorced. So I wrote that at my mom's by like two in the morning. It was, it was like after I was out with some friends and I came home and I, I just kind of came up with this little hook like for the chorus. And I just thought it was an interesting, it was an interesting line that popped off and I just had this inspiration for like, it was like I didn't want to write a love song, but at the same time, I wanted it to be like a party vibe, and people can really get down to it. But at the same time, it's like, and when I mean get down, I mean like dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I assume that, but... <laughs> um, it's. I just thought the line, like, I promise to kiss you in the morning, just shows, like, you know what, I'm a faithful guy. If I'm dating a girl, we're going to have a good time, we're going to have fun, and we're going to go out and... Um, do whatever she wants to do, but at the same time, I'm still going to be there the next day for her. So I just thought that it really represented the way that I am and uh, the way that I was feeling that night with the song, too. So that's definitely why. And I just always thought that line was kind of, it was more unique than I saw, like some of the songs that I started out releasing on YouTube. I always thought, like, the more unique a line is, the more likely that you're going to come up on YouTube, you know what I mean? Like, you type in everything, like my song on YouTube, and there's just so many, like Michael Bublé, I can already think, has a song called Everything. But, like, Kiss You in the Morning, I didn't think had ever been done before. Like, I don't think it has. So that's an even better thing. Like, if people hear that line, I promise to kiss you in the morning, and search it up, it's the first thing they see. So I was happy with that after, and I've worked on really trying to find, like, unique, unique song names and unique ideas about a song because there's so many love songs but i don't think there's that many to kind of explain like they've got a really good vibe to it super happy and it also says that like i'm a faithful guy and i'll be there the next day i'm not going to ditch you after mm -hmm. one get down <laughs> <laughs> fair enough um uh here's a question from jamie and she asks uh, will take off be released uh um, where will take off be released and you did allude to itunes um but will it just be in canada or the united states or will it be worldwide on iTunes everywhere. Just like if you could, if you have the ability to buy Kiss You in the Morning on iTunes right now, then you'll have the ability to, to, to buy uh, Takeoff. I, I'm not releasing it. It's just going to be on iTunes, so it's not in stores or anything, just because I'm not at the level yet where I can do that. And it's just so tough to figure out which cities do I release this in, and you're shipping it's like CDs. And I don't want to do it in like, it would be so typical to do it in your own town, which would just be terrible because as far as I've seen, I have 
like all my when I look on YouTube, so many more views are coming from the U.S. than Canada, and I feel like way just most of my Twitter followers probably like 75% are from the U.S. So it would be tough to figure out the exact city. So it'll be on iTunes, and who knows for the later stuff. But Takeoff will be released on iTunes everywhere. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, do you find it interesting that the um, your fan base, and this is, is similar to the show's listenership, is, is primarily in a place that isn't your own backyard? Uh, yeah, that's. I think that's what makes it cool. Like you really, you you interact with people and figure out their musical taste. Because you know, people always wonder, like, what do people in Japan listen to? They figure is there like Japanese music, or do they listen to what we what we do? The top forty is Ryan Seacrest, and I start to learn it's totally both. Like I guess they have their own music and their own artists, but like I've even you hear like when Justin Bieber goes to Japan, I think that's like he's huge in Japan. Like they they love what we like, and um, I don't even think music's one of those things where even if they know English or they don't, it's not really like music's kind of its own language. Mm-hmm. Like, I People, you like a song, you like a song. It just so happens that in the U.S., I think that's kind of like the hub, music hub of the the world. So I don't really listen to any, like, I don't know, was it K-pop or whatever they have mm-hmm. in Japan? No, that's Korea. In K- Korean pop they have, but uh, I, I mostly just listen to what everyone else does, English music. But uh, for all I know, I would love music outside of there. But as I said before, like Argentina, they sh- like, I guess they love pop music from Canada because I see so many people I see someone on my feed right now on Twitter that's happy that I mentioned Argentina <laughs> yeah I see that too it's pretty cool um, this comes from Arena I can't pronounce her last name and I'm not entirely sure where she's from but uh, because it is Christmas time and it, this is a fair question to ask uh, what are your plans for Christmas my plans for Christmas um, I I guess like right now I just I'm taking. I'm in first year university right now, so I'm still taking some a few courses while I'm there. And today was great because saw my credits and passed everything. So <laughs> it's been kind of stressful the last couple of weeks, like balancing everything. Because music's my number one. You know, I know when you grow up, school's number one, but for me, it's music. So I just had to get that out of the way, and now it's just be a lot of uh, finishing up the EP, which I'm like almost done everything dealing with when it's going to be out, iTunes, the cover, and everything, and then keep moving forward with um, expanding as much as I can. Of course, every day still trying to build the fan base and coming up with new ideas, maybe like release another cover to promote the EP. Ever since I released that cover, that little rock cover I did, it was just something I did like at 12 o'clock in the studio, just sat down and records recorded a raw little mashup of that and ever since then i've just seen so many tweets of what people want me to cover next and it's going to be tough to maybe pick a song but i feel like they really want it. i see so much justin bieber in one direction i feel like in the last uh, couple of weeks i've seen so many people tell me to cover either little things by one direction or fall by justin bieber as long as you love me there's just so many songs i feel like i might have to do something like that if i have time but it's going to be mostly working on this ep and i think as this EP is coming out, I'll be in the studio working on all that spring and summer music because I'm just trying to always move forward. The last thing I ever want to have is uh, me finally get an opportunity to uh, perform for everyone and not have enough material. So I just want to get as many songs as I can recorded and have new music always. This is a question from uh, Manlene. I'm not sure. I, I can't pronounce. I, I don't think I can pronounce her last name. But she asks, and I'm not sure where she's from, but she asks, uh, when did you realize that you had talent? <laughs> when did I realize that I had talent? You know what? Um, I didn't do music. I didn't go into music because I thought that I was really good at it. I went into it because it was what I was passionate about. When I was in uh, grade eight, I remember uh, I what was it? I started noticing the Jonas Brothers at the time, and I was just absolutely fascinated by how young they were and what they were getting to do. And you know what? To this day. When I think of like teen acts that people grew up to, maybe it's Justin Bieber, One Direction. For me, it was definitely them because I just saw that these kids are like from age like 14 to like 19 when I found out about them and they're touring the world. And I was just, I was so into that, right? A lot of guys like obviously don't like their music and aren't into it. For me, it was more the idea of what they were accomplishing at their age. And, um, I guess moving forward from there, I just really started playing the guitar. And I was fascinated about starting a band or whatever I had to do. And it was like my dad that said to me, 
um, you know what, I figure it's one of those things where you got to write music. And he, neither of my parents are musicians, but they're, like, my dad, like, for one's always been really honest with me about everything. Like, he's not the type of guy who, uh, he'll always be there for me, but he'll really tell me when something sounds good or when something doesn't sound good. And I love that. So, at the time, he told me, he's like, you know what, you got to start writing music if you want to. I was influenced by Brian Adams. He's like, that's what Brian Adams is known for. He's written so many incredible songs. So, I think it was that day I sat down and started writing, and I haven't stopped since. And... As time went on, it was kind of working for me. So then you realize, you know, I'm, I'm kind of good at this. But it was never because I thought that I was talented and I had to go into it. It was just because I was passionate about it. So whether it would have been writing music or anything else, whether it was sport or writing a novel, like I would have just done it because I liked it. And uh, I think that's what you have to do. Because if you're not passionate about what you do, um, I don't think that you should do it. Because it's funny, that's why when I'm studying for school, I always have a hard time, but I'll stay up till 4 a.m. to write a song, not because I think I have to, but because I just, I really enjoy it and time just flies by. So I feel like music is my calling, I guess. Talk to me a bit about um, songwriting. Uh, it's just from the aspect of coming up, like, because you, you mentioned you just sat down and, and wrote your first song. Was that hard? I mean, was there certain rules? Did you look up, like, the rules you have to follow to write a song, or is it just something you just put all your ideas down on paper and then said, I'll figure it out later? Sorry, that song is totally awful. Uh, <laughs> you got to start somewhere. I, when I listen to music, like a lot of the time you just listen to music, like a lot of people do. It's just like this song is between maybe two minutes and 40 seconds and three minutes and 40 seconds, but you don't really think about it. It's just songs that play on the radio and you enjoy yourself. That's why I think if you want to know if your song's good, you don't show it to someone you think is really talented with music or they know a lot or it's some celebrity or whatever. I think you should be able to show a song to anyone in the world because, as I said, music's its own language. And if they like it, whether they've ever played an instrument, if they think that it's, you know, it's catchy or they start tapping foot, you've, you've hit a home run there. So when I started, I didn't think much about it, but then right away I started discovering, all right, you got your verse or your hook or your chorus, and then, okay, you got your bridge, your breakdown, like the song needs to slow down a bit here, it can't just be constant. And then I figured, like, oh, I started working with tempos, and it's like before you walk into the studio when you're going to record, but now it's like I've already got my beats per minute figured out, my key, my possible other keys. You don't want to have all your music in the same key, and... I'm just really got to have good lyrics, but at the same time, you got to have music that people like because you can have the best lyrics in the world, but if the song uh, isn't catchy, it sucks. Like, no one's going to care. So I always try to get a bit of both because I want people to like to listen to my music and want to get up and dance to my music or whether they need to lie down and listen and feel that I understand what they're going through, if it's a ballad or any type of song. So I really try to have variation there. And uh, that's just like in the new EP, you'll hear that there's songs that are really upbeat and then there's a few others which like one of my favorite on the ep is it's uh it's called uh, wonder why and it's a song on there that it won't be a single but it's just acoustic song it's probably my favorite track on there because just the way it was written and uh i guess the feeling that i had when i wrote it so i think for anyone who's writing they just need to do it because they're inspired and then they'll slowly realize the structure and they'll realize how long a, sh a song should be and I, the first thing I realized is that make your intro pop. That was one thing I always noticed because a lot of the time when I started writing, I had long intros or boring intros, and I realized you got to capture your audience within 10 seconds. Someone once said that to me, so I've always worked on that. And I think that's why Kiss You in the Morning just starts immediately. I wanted to have that because it's just got like a catchy little guitar line in um, that, that verse, and I think it just hopefully captures people right away. This is a question from Marina in Toronto, and she asks, what's your most memorable childhood experience? Childhood experience? Uh, <laughs> um, probably, I don't know, one experience, but when see, when I was growing up and going to elementary school, like music wasn't really a part of my life at all other than piano. I was just really into sports. That's always been... A huge Vancouver Canucks fan, and I'm sorry because I realized I'm responding to a Toronto listener, <laughs> and you're over there too. But uh, you know the lockout's killing me right now, so <laughs> I have so many memories of hockey games, like going with my dad to so many games. Actually, you know what? Here's a memory. I was actually at the hockey game that uh, Bertuzzi knocked out Steve Moore. Oh wow! That's what I'm talking about anyone who's listening. But I was at that game, and I was like, I can't remember, eight years old or something? 
and there was a huge dog pile gets up, and there's like a pool of blood on the on the ice, and I remember in, I was kind of traumatized inside because he's one of your favorite players, and I think that's something I always remember because we always went to hockey games and staying up late going to those games is kind of like the time for me and my dad to really bond, <laughs> father son, and uh, that's that's something that I'll always remember for sure. And I'm sorry, I realized if it was a girl asking a question, I just made a hockey reference. <laughs> um, looking. For something more, I apologize for that, but that's something that I really remember. Well, she's from Toronto, too, so I'm, I'm sure she might understand more than if it was an American or a South American or a European listener. Um, there's a couple of people out there that want to know how to pronounce your last name, so if you don't mind just saying it out there for those that don't know, how do you pronounce your last name? So it's Mac Farrow. I know. <laughs> so Farrow. And I'm so happy to clear that up because when I was coming up with, like, fan names, people wanted me to make a fan name. I knew that so many people would probably think it's uh, Feoro because it's, it's only five letters, but uh, it's Italian, and I know it's tough. So it's Faro, and I'm glad to clear that up. And I think it'll make it's a lot easier for people to understand why it's, like, they wanted a fan name. It's Faroers, so it's not, like, Feoroers because that's kind of weird. It's Mac Faro, anyone? And I saw someone just tweeted what's your middle name so it's my name my full name is Mackenzie actually so my name is Mackenzie Robert Farrow so Mac Robert Farrow very very cool um I just wanted to, to touch on I'm going to take a couple more questions here there's some people that uh, have second questions and so we do I'm not too tight for time at this point in time but um I, I just wanted to ask um being from Vancouver what's one thing about living in Vancouver and North Van and uh, the North Shore, that area. What's one thing about being from Vancouver, BC in general that you just you love about, and and there, you got a lot of fans from other places that maybe don't know much about BC. So, what's one thing you love about the city you're from? I love that you know there's a bit of everything in Vancouver. I think that's what I like about it. Uh, there's uh, you got the mountains, you got the trees, and you you got like you got the rain, and then you got the sun. Like it's really you can never really predict what what it's going to be like here. And uh, I'm actually not big on mountain sports. I used to be, but then it's one of those things where you, like, never get up the mountain. So I don't purchase, like, a snowboard or skis anymore. But I love the fact that you've got the city life, which I love. Like, I, I don't think I could ever live out on, like, a ranch somewhere. I love the, the, the city life, and that's probably why I'm so fascinated by – although I love Vancouver, to answer your question, I love California. I always tell people that. I love going to Los Angeles – and San Diego, like some of my favorite cities there. But I guess the reason Vancouver's home for me is like the reason I'll probably live here forever or when I'm older is it's just, I don't know, it just seems to me like a safe place and it's just, it's a fun place to be. Like when people think safe place, I know there was like the riot here. <laughs> After the, the, and that probably paints a terrible image. But, you know, that was only one night and that wasn't Canuck fans. So, I, I just love everything about it here, like especially in the summertime. I'm really looking forward to it. It rains a lot in the winter, which sucks. I can hear it raining right now. I'm just hoping for snow. But it's just so nice in the summer, and we have so many amazing things that you can do here we're known for. I don't get out to enough of them. Like I live five minutes away from the Capilano Suspension Bridge, it's called. And when when you hear like when commercials on Vancouver, that's the things that they advertise, and I don't think I've ever been on it. And that's really pathetic on my part. Maybe when I was two, but I, people are always told to go on it when they come here, and I don't. So maybe that's something I should do, and then I, I can rave about how great Suspension Bridge is. It's really fun, actually. It's a lot of fun. Are there any, it's really cool. You know what? If, I don't know. Are you into photography? You know, I'm getting more into it. I guess as I, if I can travel more for music, I can't wait to take more photos. And I know that I always get questions on Twitter. It's like, you need to start uploading more photos of yourself and more photos of you doing stuff. So I'm going to work on that. I will start doing that very, very soon. You should plan a day and go to Suspension Bridge because you can get some really good pictures on there on a really nice day. So how, have you you've been on it? Yeah, I've been on, a, I've been on a few times. I used to go with my parents when I was younger uh, when we used to visit out there. And then I actually went... Um, Three years ago, and yeah, no, it's a, it's a lot of fun. I think it's changed since I, I went as a kid, but it's a, it's it's really just like a, a really cool experience. Uh, just to stand on this bridge and like look down, you're just like, wow, <laughs> it's a pretty steep fall. Yeah, exactly. I should go on there. Um, well, because I always heard the story that baby that got dropped off the suspension bridge, yeah. but it survived. Like it, I don't know how. Like it was some miracle, but it survived. It landed in a tree. Like it's 
one of those things that you hear about and you never experience close to you, but I heard it happened, and it's pretty close to me, so I think that's that's incredible. God, I would not want to see that because if that thing didn't hit a tree, it would explode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't, I don't think anyone would want to say that, but uh, see that. Uh, no, but... it's uh, it wouldn't be pretty. Um, uh, a couple more questions here. I saw one, and I just lost it. Um, talk a bit about... Um, Without giving too much away, but I guess what has how has life changed for you since you've become so popular? Do you go down the street and sometimes people know who you are? What's what's life like for you now since having chatted with you back in January? You know, it hasn't changed very much. Uh, I ever since I really got into music, like a lot, I find I don't go out as much. But you have to be. I'd sound pretty conceited if I acted like people were looking at me. You have to be pretty famous for people to, like, notice you all the time. Like, I'm just, just a kid on YouTube, to be honest with you. Like, okay, I guess sometimes I you get – when you're at my level, I guess where I am right now is you get that look where it's like, where do I know you from? You get that a lot, but it's not like that yet. Like, you know what? One day, if I have that, I'll be – that'll be incredible, and I'd be happy to think that someone wanted to come up to me and talk to me about music or whatever it was, but – Right now, it's like I have a lot of followers on Twitter and a lot of people seeing my stuff, but that's all around the world. So I have like 28,000 followers on Twitter. I don't know how many of those people are from Vancouver. And as I said, most are from the States. So there's probably just, yeah, people in my own city know me for being me. But I guess people are slowly figuring out that I'm into that who I am. This is my thing. Because I, I guess it's, it's strange for some people because I was always known like it's I, I played so much soccer growing up so now finding out this is what i do but my life hasn't changed too much in that sense like maybe it will soon it's starting to really pick up a bit as far as uh my uh i don't even like to call them i don't like to call it fans that just sounds so weird just the that are that support me in music so it's i just i can't wait for that day where as before i can just put on a show somewhere in hundreds or thousands Thousands of people just show up, and then I can really prove that I've got a good following of people that love my music. This is from Jamie, um, not 100%. Uh, she's from Los Angeles, and she's asking, uh, where do you see yourself in 20 years? Where do I see myself in 20 years? Uh, so let me think. 18 now, 38. I see my, myself already having a few kids and uh, being settled down and still performing music, but not to a level that brings me away from my family. So writing music for other artists. Uh, and probably just living in in Canada, in Vancouver, and like raising a family and just enjoying life. Hopefully by then I've had a long, successful music career. That's what I could ask for. And if I, if I wasn't living in Vancouver, the only other place I would be living at this point, I, I think, would be in California. I haven't experienced the world very much. I haven't been to that many places. So I couldn't say uh, other places I love. Like, I've always wanted to go to Italy. Like, maybe that's the place I end up. Who knows? So I don't want to, like, never say never, right? But but, although I say never in that sentence, uh, it always grinds my gears. But uh, other than that, I I don't know. uh, Hopefully I'll just have a family and uh, I'll be living the dream. Where do you you want to visit most in the world uh, other than Italy? If there's one place you could visit that isn't Italy, where would it be? Um... Hmm. I feel like Boston seems amazing when I see photos and little things. Like I'd I'd love to go there. Um, pretty much anywhere in Spain just seems like somewhere. It seems like a place I'd really like to visit. Um, like I've never been to Ontario. That's what's weird. Like where I'm talking to you from right now. I should do that. I haven't really traveled a lot in Canada. Um, that's okay. BC people don't like Ontario anyway. I know that. No, I have nothing against Ontario. There's just aid for the Maple Leafs that everyone has. But, you know, if I lived in Toronto, I'd be a Maple Leafs fan probably if I was born there. So, um, you know, probably Barcelona is somewhere I've always wanted to go. And maybe Australia. Yes, Australia, definitely. I can't wait. New Zealand. I love, like, the Lord of the Rings movies, and I know they were filmed in New Zealand and just the – what they have there, the nature they have there is just incredible to see. And I hear you can go on like a Lord of the Rings tour there or something, so I'd love to do that. But I, I'd like to travel anywhere. I'd like to spend, although I'd like to set down in my late 30s, as I said, I want to live 
uh, I, you know what? I, I want to live the, the fast life in uh, when I'm early 20s. Like I want to travel everywhere. I want to perform. I want to do everything I can and get that out of me. And uh, then I'll settle down later on. But I, I need to travel the world. It's just I'm so fascinated by like city lights and um, and even like nature so much. I I told you I want to get more into uh, uh, photography and uh, I need to get myself a good camera. So when I travel, I will document it. And hopefully I'll have people who will want to watch what I'm documenting still have fans by then. <laughs> Uh, if you're just tuning in right now, and there's uh, plenty of you that are doing so from uh, Duncan, British Columbia, all the way down to Los Angeles, California, uh, North Carolina, Ontario, and uh, other places like Iowa and Chicago, uh, you're just listening to Mac Farrell live on this program. I'm going to do some more questions, so if you have a couple more questions that you'd like to, to have answered, uh, please tweet me at, at Radio Nation, and uh, we'll do so now. Uh, it's 11.33 Eastern Time. That is uh, 8.33 Pacific Time. Um, so, Mac, I'm going to do some more questions here. Like One question I like to ask almost every guest that comes on this program is, what is your favorite Disney movie? My favorite Disney movie? Um, <sighs> favorite Disney movie, what did I grow up to on Disney? Um, I, is Lion King Disney? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I watched that a lot when I was younger. I always loved that. So, because I haven't watched a lot of, I didn't watch a lot of Disney movies when I was um, growing up elementary school. But I watched a lot of Disney or Family. They have your TV shows. So I, I like I grew up watching like Boy Meets World all the time, or Smart Guy, or uh, like Lizzie McGuire. I remember when I was young, like grade one, two, three, four. That's what was always on the TV. So I figure I was I was more of a TV show Disney guy. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, what are some What are some other questions here on Twitter? I think I just got one more coming in. Um, okay, well, there's a few people. I'm sure you've got some of the same tweets as I, I do as well. Um, so I'm not going to ask uh, anything that isn't really borderline appropriate or anything. Um, talk to me about what what's like a typical day in the life for you when you get in the studio. Um, do you record first or do you talk things over with your producer? How, give me a quick day-to-day -day life in the studio for you. Um, a day in the studio would be me getting up at like maybe 8 a.m., <laughs> having some breakfast, staying away from the dairy if I'm going to be singing, uh, get in the, the car, take like a 15-minute drive downtown, go in there. Um, we kind of settle down a bit for 10 minutes, and then I just get right to playing the acoustic version on my guitar of whatever we're doing. It just it starts super raw because you got I got to show Eric the uh, – the basis of the song and what everything sounds like and then right after that we just move we just move forward with getting down um, a rough version of the guitar some rough vocals and then i go right to the drums or whatever because a lot of the time i'm just doing i play the bass on, on like the uh the keyboard or i'm doing the synths on the keyboard sometimes i'm, just, I'm coming up with the, like the drums synthetic drums on the keyboard we're getting that stuff down and just setting up all the elements that we need for the vocals. And I love, obviously, doing those last, as many other people do. Because I really got to feel like what the song is going to sound like when I do the vocals. Maybe even mix everything a little bit. And then you just really, I love doing vocals at night. So you just really get in the mood and set the light the right way. Like, whatever it is, it's so strange. You just need to set up the room the way you like it. And then um, just get right to the song and start singing uh, whether that takes an hour or sometimes maybe two and a half hours, I, I just start with the uh, the verse, verse one, then do verse two, then I maybe do the bridge, save, do the chorus, then layer the chorus, uh, put on some harmonies, and then maybe some like ad libs for the end, and just have a lot of fun with it. Like it's a long day, and a lot of the time I don't want to bring people because it's probably so boring to watch what goes on. Certain parts are just like me sitting. Uh, doing the synths for an hour, but, but the day flies by, and by the time the vocals are come around, I'm always I love that, that part. It's so great to put them down, and then we just, I'm always just so tired at the end of the day at like 11, and then it's such a great feeling to get in the car after and uh, drive home, just knowing that you just recorded a new song. I'm just always so excited to share it with everyone. So that is a day in the studio. A couple more questions here. Um, although I don't believe you mentioned you're still you're still you're still in high school. So um, do you plan on on going to college? Um, because uh, uh, Kenzie asks, um, what are you studying in college? But uh, you're still in high school, at least as far as I still remember. And God help help me if I'm wrong. <laughs> uh, so yeah, do you plan on going to college? And if so, uh, what do you plan on studying? Well, 
Well, I sorry, I I am I'm in my first year of uh, college right or university right now. And uh, so yes, I am in university. I graduated from high school last right, year. Right. Okay, that's probably why I'm a little confused. But there we go. Okay, <laughs> I'm not going totally insane. <laughs> yeah, but I uh, I'm studying uh, like sociology, psychology, English right now. Just taking a few courses and uh, just really focusing on music. It's just kind of just like so many other people have. It's like my backup plan. And uh, it's interesting to, I guess, expand your horizons in the academic world. So it's probably good that I'm taking a few courses, keeps me focused. And then uh, it almost, this sounds bad, but it just inspires me to tr- to work even harder in music. You have those days you're in school and you're, I'm, me personally, I'm just sitting there and I'm just like, you know what, this just is not for me, what I'm learning. And I just, I want to play music and I want to write music. So it just really inspires me to go home and write a better song than I've had before, go to the studio and work even harder. And uh, it's it's really helped me in that way. And I'm just super excited for winter break now to keep moving forward with that. And I guess, yeah, the harder you work and during these times that I'm in right now, it just it only gets better every day. So just the support I'm receiving, it just if you're having a tough day or whatever it is, like it's just incredible the amount of girls that are messaging, direct messaging me on Twitter, tweeting at me, and it's it's just it's a lot of fun. This process It's just becoming more fun every single day. So yes, I will be taking some courses this year. Still, I'm not sure about next year. You know, I can only hope that that won't be, and I'll really secure myself a position in the music world. Um, my final question for you tonight is: uh, 2012 has been has been an up and down year for for many people. It's been an, an in crazy, insane ride for you. I, I'm sure you've had a you've had a terrifically you know an awesome year. You've been very successful. Um, looking back, what is the big one? Is the one main thing you really have learned about this year? Um, th- this year had. So many things. You know what? This year has taught me, um, you know what? Out of anything, I'll touch more on what I said a little bit earlier. It's taught me that when anyone, when you go out there and you really, you put yourself out there and you, you focus on your dream or whatever it is and you really want to succeed, the first thing that so many people near you are going to do is they're going to, they're going to help you out so much and they're going to support you. But um, a lot of people around you who don't really know you and they kind of judge you on your work in a sense, they're going to try to tear you down because it's the first thing that you go for when you see, especially like a musician or like a dancer or something, like you want to try to tear them down because it's an art form. And it's something that um, is behind a keyboard or whatever it is you can try to. But I've really learned that if you just stay focused on what you're doing and you just focus on the people that matter, you will succeed. And uh, you can't stop for one second. You got to go so hard. And um, I guess that's that's the other thing is that with what you're doing is I find that it's too it's too easy to get down about that type of stuff and see that someone's like maybe like writing or hitting on you on YouTube or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, when you see the support that you have and like the thousands of people that like what you're doing. It just it shows you that you can't try to please everyone because I think if you try to please everyone, you'll lose no matter what. But if you focus on the demographic or the people that really like what you're doing and you just focus on pleasing them and doing what you love, you will succeed. And this year has shown me that it was it was tough at the beginning to get through the phase where not many people know who you are. You're kind of always unsure of yourself, like, oh, is this good what I'm doing? Is this song good? And then eventually you get to a point where you're getting thousands of views and people love what you're doing and you're moving forward. And it's just... It's incredible for me to think that a year ago today I didn't even have a YouTube account, and now it's like 150,000 views and 28,000 girls that are on there that are supporting me and what I'm doing. So 2013, I'm just so excited about It's going to be a fun year to move forward even more and expand the fan base. And I hope anyone out there who is kind of considering doing something and they're a little unsure because they're worried about maybe if it will or won't work out, you know, like life is too short to worry about stuff like that. So you just got to do it and like who cares what anyone says because I could definitely tell people from I waited a long time. So it might hurt when people don't like something that you do or they tell you that what you're doing is you shouldn't be. But it hurts even more to miss opportunities and to not take that risk. And you're sitting in your room and you're like, you know what, I'm, you're in the position sometimes where you're like, why didn't I just do it? I don't, I don't care what anyone says right now. I should have gone for it. So I'm just happy that I got over that hump and I hope that anyone else who's considering – taking that chance and going after their dream just does it because it's, it's totally worth it, especially if 
um, people like your music or your art or whatever you're doing. All right, Mac. It is. Uh, it has been a pleasure to, to have you on the show tonight, and you've been on this. Uh, you've been on air for an hour and nine, almost ten minutes now, and uh, you've uh, you've done a good job. You've held it. You held your own in there for for an hour and a in ten minutes, which is uh, pretty good because we usually don't go that long with uh, too many of the interviews. So again, man, it's uh, it's been a pleasure to talk to you tonight, um, and, and uh, hopefully all the best in the new year to you, and uh, Merry Christmas as well. Oh, Merry Christmas to you too, man. Thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. And uh, it's pretty cool to talk to you because you were the first person that ever interviewed me, and now we're back here a year later. So let's hope that uh, we're talking again really soon. And I'm excited to send you the new tracks to play whenever I do. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and one of those tracks is uh, Kiss You in the Morning, which I'm about to play right now. So, again, Mac, uh, thanks a lot for coming on tonight. And, uh, yeah, we'll chat again sometime, uh, maybe sometime in the springtime when you release your EP, your first one. Let me know, and you're, well, you're more than welcome to come back on. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me, and thank you to everyone who is out there listening. I really appreciate it, and I'll have new music for you soon. One last thing before you go. For those that have never really heard you before, uh, how do they find you on social media? Social media, my Twitter is at Mac Farrow, M-A-C-F-A-O-R-O. On YouTube, it's just Mac Farrow, one word, same thing, and Facebook.com slash Mac Farrow. Um, that's it. I, I've got MySpace, but, like, you know what? I'm not even going to promote that because nothing gets MySpace, but I don't think anyone uses it anymore. So It's making a comeback, I hear, but we'll see. Justin Timberlake's going to be uh, working on that. And you know what? If he's going for it, I, I forgot to mention him, one of my big influences, so I believe that he can do it. He but, brought Sexy uh, I, back. You know, he can bring MySpace back. But uh, I assume anyone who's listening is probably following me on Twitter, so if they want to spread the word, I'd really appreciate it. And, yeah, Nicholas, thank you again so much for having me on. Appreciate it. No worries, man. Take care and enjoy BC. I'll be out there in about a week's time. I'm looking forward.